Hi everyone, welcome back to Community Number 3, uh, the first episode. So, the original four players aren't the same, um, well, the, 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 the four players playing now are not the same as the original four. Two of the people that were drawn in the, the list uh, couldn't make it, I think one of them's not active anymore. Um, so we've had some replacements come in, um, so I'll just quickly run through the, the current players now we have in the game. Uh, we've got JBD, um, as playing as Russia, we have Tanners playing as Germany, we have Stevie Mac playing as Britain, have myself obviously as Japan and we have Tommy as the US. So yeah, a slightly different lineup, but yeah, it should be good. So I'll jump into the game and let's have a look uh, what the situation is. Hmm, Norway's gone. Okay, so me and Matt, I've got a game plan going into this. Um, it may vary depending on what happens <laughs> throughout this first two turns, but. Yeah, we have a game plan. I'm aware that the Allied team have also been planning because they were in, they were in voice chat. I, I saw you in there. They were in voice chat um, yesterday, I believe. Um, yeah, so that, I know they've got a strategy going in, so you have to be careful of that. Now, if we quickly run through what's happened so far, one of the good things for us initially was the Ukraine attack. Um, I'm not sure if JBD was strafing or he just didn't have, didn't have the roles, but um, he pulled out and we had the, the bomber and fighter remaining in the Ukraine, which is nice for us. So... On the back of that, we then went for the attack into Egypt, which we took, but we'll, we'll, I'll get into that in a second. So yeah, fairly standard uh, purchases. Again, West Russia took fairly cleanly, not too bad. 12, 3 infantry losses, not bad. Um, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag here. So he lost, we lost 3 infantry, but then he lost 2 infantry while it's So probably the rolls weren't great there, but it's, yeah, it's, we've lost 2 infantry on the front lines, I guess. So for Germany... Um, Three infantry, three artilleries, two tanks, and a bomber. Very mixed um, purchases. But we've got an idea of why that is. <laughs> we've got a game plan, obviously, as I said. So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, deliberate. Um, and also, come up, move on. Yeah, pretty standard. I think the, the two main factors for round one Germany was obviously Egypt being taken. That was good. Um, we also had a really bad role um, on the season, yeah, season seven. We killed, what did we kill, actually, in combat? It wasn't great. Yeah, the defense lost one destroyer and defeated everything. <laughs> so that was an awful role for us um, in the Atlantic, which means obviously now Britain has then taken advantage of that by taking away Norway straight away. Um, yeah, we, we've had a, a rough start over there. So that, this is going to be early pressure. Now, I'm not sure if their game plan was to go for Japan first or Germany first, but I think on the back of this, it probably it will probably be wise to go for Germany. That's what I'm going to guess. Because they've had such a head start now with this fleet that they can just keep pressuring now. Um, so it's going to be probably up to me to keep the pressure on on my side of things um, and try and you know expand my economy while they're focusing on Germany. That's going to be the, probably the game plan, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, and just quickly, Britain um, carrier destroyer three infantry. Yeah, so pretty standard. Put some stuff into um, India, and he's got the fleet prepared. So they are now ready to start landings obviously straight away which is not good um anything yeah one interesting move actually he went for a bomber raid on Corellia which is pretty unique I've not seen that before um but it's successful yeah four IPC damage that's pretty good so actually it's going to cost four to repair that um at least three to put something down there because obviously the health of this complex is only four itself so he completely destroyed it <laughs> in one bombing raid so we're gonna to have to spend at least three to get that back online, at least to, to produce one troop. So that's that's pretty good actually. Um, anything else worth mentioning? Nothing too substantial. I think he, yeah, he took back Egypt as well with three infantry. So this is kind of an annoyance now. Although I think on the following round, unless it's been reinforced by something, I think we can probably ship something back in from Italy and retake it, um, Egypt and then push down. Which I think is going to be the game plan. Try and take away all the IPC we can straight away. I think we're going to need to anyway because obviously we've got a lot of pressure now in the north immediately so taking away Africa if we can is going to be great for us. Um, I also plan to do something with that but we'll, we'll get onto that later. <laughs> so my purchases. I want to highlight something as well. This is really, I, I like this is I think one of Stevie's signature moves which I really like. It's putting this British bomber in Xinjiang because it can hit a lot of the coastal like sea provinces um, and it's a pest. It's a, such a pest to have this here because obviously you're, you're thinking about defending transports, but it, it makes you just doubly careful with wh where things are. Um, particularly because obviously this this um, fighters here as well. 
So C-Zone 61 is now not really going to be an option unless I stack it with something substantial. Um, it's a nasty place for a bomber that. It's really nasty. <laughs> I only know he does this because we were playing a game, um, just a custom game, um, behind the scenes. But we started before this and I, he did this as well. And actually, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I lost a, at least a transport to it because I wasn't... By the time I'd seen it, it was too late. So, yeah, it's a nice move. But now I'm ready for it so I can hopefully prepare that a little bit better and defend my... Uh, Defend my transports. Um, another great thing about obviously taking Egypt is he lost the fighter in Egypt, which means then he couldn't go for the attack down here, which is great for me. That's fantastic to move. I, I, I don't like this move as Japan. I think it's on the odds as well. It's so risky. It's like it's such a you know 50 50 really if you come out on top uh, in this battle. So I like it when they don't go for this because it just it's just you know. This fleet is so valuable, two fighters, battleship, carrier, it's just really good. So we have this in play now, which is nice. I'm not sure whether to go for the transport. I'd like to, but then we're leaving ourselves open to a bit of an attack from the everything else that he's got nearby. So yeah, this might require some thought. I have to replenish the transport we lost here. We need at least two, at least. That's, you know, imperative. Um... I'm going to go for Pearl Harbor, obviously. Uh, we have to. Um, I think possibly two more. Two transports. Artillery. Yeah. Sorry, this may require a bit of thought for me, because I'm just considering what my options are here. This, Especially with this bomber here as well, that, that changes the thing. Changes the <laughs> because normally you'd take uh, Bariatia and then you'd have you'd be completely insured against any kind of aerial attack. But with this here, that that's not the case because normally I'd be leaving transports here undefended, pretty much. Um, so now I can't do that. So I've got to doubly think about putting. I'm going to need at least a battleship here. I think with the probably the destroyer. Um, now I'm thinking of going. Okay, there's a reason for going for this bomber. We, we have a game plan, obviously, like I mentioned. So <laughs> the bomber is part of it. We've, we've got an idea about those, so we're going to try and do something. So I'm going to go for that. I think that's going to be okay. We've got two transports coming in. We've got artillery. I'm not maxing out on artillery, which is unfortunate. I think I'd like to be, but I also want to try and pressure uh, Russia as the game plan for those bombers. So let's commit to that. Let's go for it. It's a bit of a different build, but let's, let's try it. All right, so Pearl Harbor, let's do it. I'm going to go for Pearl Harbor Light, so I'm going to leave the carrier where it is and throw everything else in. Um, the danger with taking this transport... I mean, we could do it. It's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. I'm just trying to work out the options here because if I leave the this carrier needs to die, that, that has to happen. But if I go for the transport here, I need to obviously defend the carrier if I'm leaving it nearby because it can be hit by a lot of things. I uh, one, two, three actually hang on. One, two, three. Yeah. That's not as bad actually, hang on, so it's, it's one, two, three, four there, okay, we need to take this as well if we're going to do that. I think we're okay, actually, because this, this carrier's not in range. I was thinking of parking the carrier here, obviously we're in range of the, the bomber and now the fighter as well, but this carrier can't reach us over here, so really, it's not too bad, I think we can afford to go for that, uh, that transport, I think we're going to do it, which means we can free this battleship to go for this. Pearl Harbor's fine. Um, we'll obviously go for this. Um, so we'll leave the battleship and the destroyer on this side to defend against, obviously, this bomber. Let's throw you in and let's throw everything else in here. Okay. One, two, three, four. No, that doesn't work. 
Just double checking my moves here, so Berriatia should be safe. Be surprised if he attacked with seven infantry on that. These one, yeah, okay. I think actually what we should do here is, yeah, definitely throw that fighter. That's, we've got a spare fighter down here, so I'm going to throw that into the battle against the cruiser to ensure we don't lose that fight. Cause losing the battleship there would be pretty disastrous for us, and it could quite easily happen there. Um, I think that's going to be okay. We've ensured ourselves against this. I mean, he may attack the battleship with um, a fighter and bomber, but I would expect to, him to lose something there if he did go for that. Um, the other option is to just go for... I'm just wondering if I'm... Sorry, this is taking a while, but this is a tricky a tricky start here. That, that fight, the, the bomber changes everything. Um, I'm just wondering whether if, if it's worth going for the transport and not just compiling everything in the sea zone. Um, or is it worth just taking that out to a late, enable Germany to get an easier time into uh, Egypt? I think in the long run I'm going to go for it. I, I wouldn't imagine an attack against the battleship with a, a bomber and a fighter. That would be risky, I would say. And in fact, I think what I'll do, I'll put the destroyer with the battleship over here, and then I'll leave the the battleship here to defend against that one one bomber. Uh, yeah, that's better. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Okay, so the big battle first. This is going to be pretty important. Hopefully, get a clean win here. <sighs> of course. Well, wow, terrible from both sides. There, to be fair, that was awful. <laughs> Wow. Um, we take the fighter. Yeah, okay. Pretty solid win there, I'd say. Pretty solid. Could kill the cruiser. Very nice, very nice. Anyway, yeah, not too bad. <clears throat> yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, overall there, I cannot complain. That was a great win at Pearl Harbor. Um, minimal losses everywhere else. That was pretty good. Um, so we can also pull back now as well. Okay, I think that looks good. See, the other, the other option there is to throw the carrier into this fight and leave the trans the leave the uh, the fighter there, but I don't think I want to do that actually. I want the the fighter available back here. I think it's going to be too costly to, to rebuild. Given the situation anyway in Europe, I think what will happen probably now for um, for Tommy, um, I would imagine he would maybe take this back, possibly, um, and then he'd build on the eastern side of America to go for Europe. Um, so hopefully that'll be the last of it. So I'm trying to save my aircraft here from any you know future attack. And we can use them elsewhere, because I think Japan, is, it, it's probably going to fall on me, if I'm predicting right, to expand and obviously gain the economy for the Axis, because we're going to need need that. Um, so I want all my aircraft available, if possible. So I think we defended effectively against the bomber threat here. I wouldn't go for that destroyer battleship attack, that would make no sense now. This is now insulated as well, that's safe. Um, one battleship against, again, I've got an extra hit to take against that bomber, so I would not go for that attack either. So I think we're okay. That looks good to me. Fairly happy with that. 
So we have our two transports going down, and there we go. So decent start. I think for me that was a great turn actually. That was not a lot not a lot went wrong for me there. That was pretty good. Um mixed bag for Germany. Good start for Britain, good start for me. So it's fairly even so far. So yeah, my my plan now, if we can this may be a stalemate for a while, um, but that shouldn't be a concern anyway. I think what I'll probably do is try and blitz out of this. Take go back to Beriatia. Um, because he can't really attack this. And then I'm going to try and just force drop off troops constantly in Yunnan, push through China and try to help, you know, pressure Japan with some bomber support. That's the idea. I, I, should I go for it now? I'll, I'll just say it. <laughs> Why not? Me and Matt are planning to do like a, a bomber blitz on Moscow itself. <laughs> We're both building bombers. With the idea of just completely crippling Russia's economy early. Um, high pressure on Russia. So I want to, you know, see Moscow and rebels very early on. So... Constant bomber pressure, if we can. That's uh, going to be the way forward, I think. While we're able to, because this is actually not great for us, obviously. We've had a slower start here. So, if you can keep up the bomber production, that's going to be good. But they are, obviously, very expensive. But if I can support with that, I will. So, we've both got two bombers as of now. So, that's going to be, by the end of our next turn, we're going to be in a position to then, obviously, start bombing things. So, uh, crippling Russia is going to be the key. And then, I think, also, I want to try and... Sneak a transport down south and then go west to Africa. Um, Matt probably can break Egypt here. I would expect him to. The odds are good there. Um, and then obviously he, he starts flooding down and taking Africa territories. I can make sure Madagascar falls and then probably, you know, southern uh, Africa as well. Just to take away any IPC we can. And then maybe have ideas about Brazil. Just want to try and chop off all the IPC we can. Um, with the assumption the American doesn't come for Japan. I don't think he will. Um... I'd like to take obviously New Zealand as well, um, Australia, all this kind of stuff. Max out on our IPC and just try and help out and just kill. Ru yeah, Russia first. That's gonna be our, our job. Russia first. Heavy bombing with Russia, uh, with pressure on Russia. So, yeah, it's gonna be good. I think obviously what I'll do. It's a bit awkward being Japan because I can't obviously see America's move on the same round. So I'll probably record and then obviously in the, the next episode I'll always just summarise and what uh, what Tommy's done. So it's a bit awkward, but. Yeah, it'd be right. But there we go, here we go. Community Gamer 3, round 1, done. <laughs> Sorted. So I'll see you in round 2. Take care.